Welcome back, naturalists, to the Parts of a Shell series. Today, we're going to be talking about the Nautilus shell. First, I'm going to give some background information on the animals that these shells belong to. Then, I'm going to break down the parts of a Nautilus shell, and finally, tell you about the two main groups of Nautilus that exist today. Nautilus have been a source of inspiration throughout math, science, and even popular culture. In Jules Verne's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Captain Nemo's fantastic underwater submarine is named the Nautilus after these animals. It takes the protagonists all across the world's oceans exploring the wonders of the deep. Many real life submarines were also named after these animals, including the USS Nautilus, which was the first operational nuclear submarine. Nautilus belonged to the class of mollusks called cephalopods. This group includes other animals like squids, octopus, and cuttlefish. Most cephalopods have a very short lifespan, growing rapidly and dying young. They can live anywhere from a couple months to just a few years. Even the giant Pacific octopus only lives for about three to five years. Nautilus, on the other hand, have a relatively long lifespan, living over 20 years. These guys get old for cephalopods. Nautilus have a set of about 90 tentacles or arms that surround their mouth. They use these tentacles to forage and hunt for food. Underneath the tentacles and mouth is a funnel. Nautilus will shoot water out of this funnel like jet propulsion to get around. And boy, do they get around. Nautilus will spend the daytime in deep water, hundreds of meters deep but each night they'll migrate up to shallower waters to forage and hunt for food. Now let's get into the parts of a nautilus shell. All living nautilus have a spiral shell, but there are some extinct species that have straight, curved, and other variations of shell patterns. You may have seen the spiral nautilus shell on the front of a math textbook. This is because they're often used to represent the golden ratio or the Fibonacci sequence. Many people believe that the nautilus shell increases in size at the golden ratio. But in reality, the idea that nautilus shells represent the golden ratio is false. Now there may be a few shells that happen to fit this ratio, but most shells just don't. Now on the other hand, the shell worlds do increase in size on a logarithmic scale, which still is pretty cool. Nautilus shells will have two main shell layers, a nacreous layer and a calcareous layer. The nacreous layer will be on the inside of the shell. Nacreous stands for nacre, which is also known as mother of pearl. That gives the inside of these shells a very illustrious finish. It's also the reason why the most common nautilus, the chambered nautilus, is also known as the pearly nautilus. The calcareous layer of the shell is the outside layer and gives it a white appearance. The shell layer often has some kind of other markings on the outside, like these orange stripes. Like in other mollusks that we've discussed, the large opening in the shell is called the aperture. In living nautilus, the aperture is covered by a fleshy door called the hood. The hood allows them to seal up their shell and protect them from things like predators. Now, if you cut a nautilus shell in half, you get to see a lot of other interesting structures. The first thing you'll probably notice when you look at the cross section of a nautilus is that there are a set of walls that separate the shell into different chambers. These chamber walls are called septum. You can see where these septum were attached to the outer shell. This is called the suture. Now one of the chambers is significantly larger than the rest. This chamber is called the body chamber or the living chamber. This is where the entire body of the nautilus will be housed. The rest of the shell, other than the body chamber, is called the phragmacone. A tube called the siphuncle will run from the body chamber into the chambers of the phragmacone. You can see the hole where the siphuncle ran through the septum of these chambers. The siphuncle allows the nautilus to control its buoyancy in water by regulating the amount of gas or liquid in these compartments. There are about six species of nautilus living today, and they all belong to the family Nautilidae. And there are two genuses within this family, Allonautilus and Nautilus. The genus Nautilus includes the nautiloids that you've most likely heard of, like Nautilus pompilus, or the chambered nautilus. There are about four species in the genus Nautilus. Allonautilus, on the other hand, includes some incredibly rare animals. There are only two species within this genus, and these species have only been spotted a couple times in the wild. The easiest way I've found to tell the difference between a Nautilus and an Allonautilus is to look at the umbilicus. The genus Nautilus usually has a closed umbilicus. This means that you can't really see the smaller shell whorls from the outside of the shell. Allonautilus, on the other hand, has an open umbilicus. This means that you can see those smaller shell whorls from the outside of the shell and it kind of looks like a hole or indentation at the center of the shell. Now you may be wondering why I haven't talked about paper nautilus. And that's because paper nautilus actually aren't nautiloids at all. They're really an octopus. And the shell of a paper nautilus isn't really a shell. It's a modified egg casing. We'll talk about paper nautilus in a future video. Thank you so much for watching. If you learned something, drop a like on the video. And if you'd like to see more content related to shells and the biodiversity of our oceans, then subscribe.